Hello, Pastor Wayne Carpenter here from Christian Church for All Nations. I'm the worship director and this is our morning devotional. Today we're going to talk about proof that God exists. So I've been laid up lately and I've been able to catch up on some entertainment. Now, would it sound more spiritual if I said that I watched a movie about the rapture? This one was produced in 2015 and called Final, The Rapture or the Rapture movie. I'll avoid promoting any video service except to say that I did watch it for free. Now the movie isn't great, but there is one core character, a university professor that drives the message that is echoed across the globe by unbelievers. Prove to me that there is a God. Now Jesus saw himself found himself in a similar situation. And this was his response. This is Matthew 16, 4. A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no shine, sign shall be given to it, except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. At this point in his ministry, Jesus had performed a more than enough miracles for them to come to the conclusion that he's truly the Christ. The challenge that they put before them, them, or put before Christ, was bogus on its face. Now, what was the sign of the prophet Jonah? There are many ways that Bible scholars approach this, but in context, I believe that Jesus is simply pointing out to them that they have all the information that they needed to repent. But what exactly happened with Jonah? Well, once Jonah finally gets to Nineveh in Jonah 3, 4, he gets there and he cries out and says, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Verse 5, so the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. Then word came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. The people of Nineveh had to believe that Jonah was sent by God to have that kind of a response. Now, in the words of Jesus concerning himself in John 6, 29, Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God that you believe in him whom he sent. Let's pray. I thank you, Lord, that you've hidden so much from the wise of the world and shared it with us, Lord, your children. And as we accept, Lord, as a child from you, this wisdom, and we accept your kingdom, Lord, that way, fully believing that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and rose from the dead. We know that you'll fill us with the revelation now to be able to reach people, Lord, who are wise in their own eyes. And they'll reach them, Lord, with your love and break the chains that they're in bondage to and ask for that power. I ask that for that for authority, Lord. You've given it to us, but I'm asking, Lord, to free us up to make that happen in Jesus' name. Amen. So have you ever walked away from a conversation and said, Ugh, oh, I had better stuff to say in the conversation. Me too. Now in 1 Peter 3.15, Peter says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to anyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Now most of us will never be certified Bible scholars, but we can understand that our answer should reflect the depth of our belief in God. If we overlook the question that they're posing, which is coming from the flesh, and see the person asking the question as a soul that Christ died for, the answer to their question comes much easier. In the case of the movie, the university professor is berating any student that dares to rise to his challenge to prove that God exists. I realize these are just actors, however, but this situation is not that uncommon. Most who make a challenge like this are given over 
to hatred and fear. My answer to this man, the university professor is, you, sir, are the proof. To his credit, his character would not have let that go. And he would challenge the assumption and ask for further proof. My answer would be, what is it that makes you angry? What is it that makes you afraid? His answer would almost certainly be, I find it incredible that anybody would be that stupid to believe in something that they cannot prove. And my answer would be back to him, well then today you have proved it, thank you. You cannot see God yet his presence is so evident in your mind that you are passionate about removing it. You see, Jesus said, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That is all the proof you will ever have. It is all the proof you will ever need. Now, as a reminder to us as believers, in Romans 1.20, Paul says, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, that is God's, that is, his eternal power and divine nature has been clearly perceived, being understood by what has been made, so that they are without excuse. We have the opportunity of a lifetime. With all the enemy can throw at the church, he can never remove the power of the resurrection in our lives unless we allow it. Speak to your friends, your neighbors, your co-workers. Tell them about the hope that is in you. Tell them about and show them the love of God that you carry as an ambassador of the kingdom. Reach out and help them solve temporal problems. That will open up a door to talk to them about the spiritual. In John 15, 13, Jesus says, Greater love has no one than this, that a person will lay down his life for his friends. Let's be that friend today. Thank you, Father God, that we can walk in assurance, we can walk in the comfort of your Holy Spirit, and we can walk justified, Lord, in the sense that we can confess our sins to you, and that we can walk in a sense of holiness, Lord, that is much more than we could ever attain on our own. We just can't. We need the blood of Jesus Christ. We're surrendered to that. And I ask, Lord, that as we walk in that power, that it become evident to the people around us and that they will want more because they cannot find it in the world. It's impossible. Let them find it in us. And I ask for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, and by the way, what happened to the university professor in the movie? I can't give the ending away. So if you'd like to join us, uh, we have service at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning at Christian Church for All Nations. We're roughly 12 mile and, and Shainer, excuse me. And then also on Tuesdays at 11, we have Tuesdays with Pat, which is a nice traditional service. If you're available for that, I highly recommend it with a beautiful segment of our community, very loving. And uh, it's, it's a very powerful service. And also on Wednesdays at 6.30 to 7.30, we also have praise and worship and the word. Well, thank you for joining us today. Have a great weekend. God bless you as you go.